Starfield is our first new universe in over 25 years, but it's still a Bethesda RPG through and through, where you step into a new world and you get that feeling of unlimited possibilities. But this time, it's not just one world. It's over a thousand worlds. Because the choice of where to go, it's not ours, it's yours. And it wasn't until now that we had the technology to create it. From the rocks at your feet, to the mountains in the distance, to the people and creatures that live in these worlds. That isn't just a backdrop. That moon is actually there orbiting the planet. Yes, you can visit it too. We realistically simulate the galaxy around you. Our next generation lighting model uses real-time global illumination to light the world based on the type of star and the makeup of the planet's atmosphere. We also have an all new animation system. And of course, you can play it in third person and you can play it in first person. We love exploration and rewarding it, but you do explore differently in this game given its scale. That usually involves exploring an area you've landed in. You can collect resources, do a mission, and maybe even stumble upon something unexpected. We do love stuff and all of the items allowing you to pick everything up. And you can view all that in your data menu. This is the hub for everything you're doing, from your skills to your ship, your missions, and your inventory. We love to pack a ton of detail in every object, from all of your weapons, to spacesuits, to food. We just obsess over the details and food. We obsess over food. When you're done exploring, you can walk back or fast travel to your ship. We have companions and crew you can take with you. I left Vasco here back at my ship. Welcome back, Captain Howard. And he can even say your name. Let's head out. Our mission was to convey the wonder and majesty of space exploration to evoke the romance of the golden age of early spaceflight. And we've been referring to this approach as NASA punk. This means a design language where the tech is advanced, yet still looks grounded and relatable. For us, it's, it's that contrast, that's where the visual interest is. Obviously the NASA, which is the rigid, hard function over style, and then punk, which is all about style. You can see that visual style coming through in your ship. Your ship is your home for you and your crew. And like many of the spaces in our game, it has a slightly retro and analog touch, a bit of lo-fi rather than sci-fi, where everything is well used, worn, and lived in. All righty, what's the plan, Captain? This is your star map. It starts with the planet you're currently on. You can see all of its info and resources. You can choose a landing spot or fast travel to known locations. Backing out further, you can view all the planets in the system. Obviously, the game is big, and it's here you can see planets that have key locations, missions, or life on them, versus the many planets that are barren but resource-heavy. Zoom out even further to see all the systems in this part of the galaxy. Here, you can plot a course to ones that are light years away. This uses your ship's grav drive to fold space and jump to these systems and you will need to upgrade your ship and skills if you want to jump to the most distant ones. But for now, we'll plot a course to the Alpha Centauri system where we can find the city of New Atlantis. Welcome to UC Space. 
space. Maintain your current course while we scan your ship's cargo. Scan complete. You are cleared for landing at New Atlantis. As soon as you land in a city like New Atlantis, your eyes are guided upwards to just these boundless, vast buildings. It's the biggest city we've ever made, not just in size, but also in the amount of custom art, crowds, and quests. So the main focus when we're designing a city is obviously what supports the story. We try and tell as many small stories as possible. This is a colony war memorial. It's a few moments of gameplay that make the space feel like it's full of real characters that are going about their day-to-day -day lives. It's paralyzing if you really stop and think about it. Buddy, it's coffee. It's also where your adventure with Constellation begins. Welcome to Constellation. We have a lot to talk about. By the time you meet them, Constellation is sort of seen as this mythical group. Most people don't even know they exist anymore. They're the last true explorers in the galaxy, and they're trying to find the answers to some of humanity's biggest questions. The artifacts are so different, so alien, and I'm certain one of them reached out and spoke to you. The artifact if you could place it on the table here. Oh my god, look at how it's coming together. That means there's a set built by an intelligence outside the settled systems. It's definitely an eclectic cast of characters. You've got Sarah Morgan, the ex-soldier and adventurer, now Constellation's leader. Matteo, the theologian who believes that there's definitely something else out there. Noel, the gifted scientist and Sarah Morgan's protege and Walter, a very successful businessman in the settled systems and Constellation's financier. Anything goes as long as you have the money. There's also Vlad, the ex-pirate, Sam Coe, the former space cowboy, and Barrett. You know what I hate about these pirates? Completely resistant to my otherwise irresistible charm. The journey you take with Constellation is just the first of many you'll embark on. The Settled Systems is home to all kinds of different stories, people, and adventures for you to uncover. The United Colonies is where you'll find New Atlantis, the first major human settlement in space. The people who live here value law, discipline, and the legacy of humanity. They consider themselves the true children of Earth. You ever think of joining up with the Vanguard? Help the United Colonies even get your UC citizenship? New Atlantis isn't the only city within the United Colonies. The city of Sidonia on Mars to this day serves as the largest mining facility for the United Colonies. Beyond the United Colonies' reach, you might find yourself in a much more wild and independent coalition of star systems. This is Freestar Collective Space. The capital of the Freestar Collective is Aquila City. The Stone Root Inn is an Aquila City fixture. A ranger relies on judgment and intuition to do what's best for the people. Neon started out as a fishing platform, but is now known throughout the settled systems as a pleasure city where almost anything goes. If you've got morality issues, this definitely isn't the job for you. Ryujin is hiring the best and brightest of today for our future tomorrow. Everyone has been chewed up and ground up by Neon. Try not to get yourself killed, all right? Outside the bounds of civilized space, there are still plenty of unclaimed systems to explore, but these areas are also home to the most hostile factions in the galaxy. The great serpent hungers. All heathens shall be made dust in time. 
A new face. This is the face of a brave runner here to challenge the Red Mile. They think the galaxy is theirs. They are wrong. It belongs to the Crimson Fleet. It always has. In Starfield, we're pushing our cities and settlements further than we ever have before. It's all there, waiting for you. A slice of humanity's future. So, ready to get out there? Throughout the galaxy, there are so many things to see and stories to experience. But the most important story is the one that you tell. I'm the type of person who spends hours in character creation, and I think people are going to be really excited when they see all of the improvements we've made. One of the biggest overhauls was done through our character generation system. We scanned a wide range of faces from different age groups and ethnicities, and by mixing and matching all that data, we were able to create highly detailed and diverse characters. We use that exact system to create all the characters and NPCs you're going to see in the game. So any character you see almost always is a character you could make yourself. Hey, come on. Come on. OK, take it easy. You were out cold. Uh, no physical damage. Mentally, the jury's still out. You know who you are? New recruit for Argos Extractors? Ring any bells? Any of this look familiar? You start your character creation journey as though you're cycling through employee records. You'll pick from a lineup of 40 presets, and that'll be your starting point. Your journey from there can be as detailed or as quick as you want it to be. This new system has more to offer than ever before. It's also the simplest character generation system we've ever had. We let the player get as close as possible to make whatever they want, with the various facial morphs you can blend together, the dermesthetic and makeup, blemishes, scars, piercings, teeth settings. It's a lot, but I think it's the most fun to use. Character creation is more than just how you look. This is also where you start to decide who you want to be. That's where backgrounds come in. Backgrounds give you a bit of backstory and start you out with three basic skills. From chef to dusty. You know, the crew still has a betting pool about which restaurant critic you must have crossed to wind up here. What's great about backgrounds is you never know when yours is going to come in handy. You could be in the middle of a fancy restaurant talking to some guy, and suddenly you learn he needs a beast hunter to help track down a monster. Fine. I probably should stick to professionals anyway, given what happened the last time. We're also giving you the option to customize your build even further by letting you pick up to three traits. Traits are completely optional, and they come with their own advantages and disadvantages. You could choose to meet your biggest fan. By Vectera, by Vectera, by Vectera! Is it really, really you? He'll join your crew, and he'll give you gifts, if you're willing to put up with this constant commentary. I can't believe I get to stand near you, breathing the same air. I've got to have every molecule. My favorite trait is kid stuff. You have to pay some credits to support your parents, but they're very sweet, and it's really fun to go visit them. Honey, we got ourselves a visitor. Oh, my God! I came across some hostile zealots in space, but because I had chosen a trait that made me the same religion as them, I was able to get by without any issues. There's another great one that gives you a damage buff when your health is low, but mercenaries will randomly show up and try to kill you. No matter what you choose, there will be plenty of ways for you to tell your story. And if you want to remove a trait, there are ways to do that too. What a view. It's a feast for the eyes. Off we go to another adventure. We'll let you discover that on your own. Once you've built the perfect character, that's when your journey can really begin. We took what we loved about skills and perks from our previous games and put them together to create an all new skill system. Each time you level up, you get a skill point, which can be used to unlock or rank up skills. Ranks are unlocked by completing challenges associated with that skill. 
challenges become increasingly difficult as you work your way to higher ranks. With our five different skill trees and four ranks per skill, there's a lot to choose from. I like the Xenosociology skill because it lets you mind control aliens. Boost pack, out of the gate. I'm boost pack and everywhere. I like maxing out my physical tree so I can get neuro strikes and just punch my way through combat. That one's a lot of fun. Invest in the skills that suit your play style. I'm very much a stealth player. So, I'm out there pickpocketing everyone. My favorite part about being stealthy is slowly creeping through vents like you're in a movie and then jumping out and springing on people. Whenever possible, I like to talk my way through situations. This area's off limits. Fine, I'll issue you an access card. I'm more of a run and gun player. I like doing the death from above thing where I boost pack over guys and I throw landmines at them. I like blowing stuff up. Exploration is a key aspect of all our games. In Starfield, there are full star systems with new life, resources, and adventures. Our team worked hard to strike a balance between fun and realism. We studied data from NASA and a multitude of other sources to help us make the world feel believable. From the way we approached planetary atmospheres to the way we placed biomes based on the planet's distance from the sun. Once we had created a grounded world, we could start looking at all the things that make that world fun. When you leave a planet and head into space, you'll be navigating asteroid fields, having chance meetings with interesting strangers, dogfighting in space, and exploring derelict ships. It's all out there. Ultimately, it's about rewarding your curiosity because whether it's on the surface of a planet, the alleys of a city, or the vastness of space, you never know what you'll find. Space exploration is possible thanks to your ship. Your ship is almost like having another character or home you can make all your own. I think you'll be blown away by the amount of stuff you can do. You can buy a ship. I'm sure you can find something you like. Customize and upgrade that ship. And hire a crew to keep it up and running. And it all starts in spaceports. Every spaceport has a ship technician where you can purchase, sell, and modify ships. Anything I can help you with? Maybe you start off with a speedy fighter that's perfect for bounty hunting. Then you might round out your ship roster with a hulking space freighter to run cargo missions, or even do a little smuggling. For now though, we're going to take our starting ship, the Frontier, and make some changes. You can customize and upgrade everything you see here. And you have two ways to do that. You can quickly upgrade individual systems like your weapons or shields, or you can deep dive and enter the shipbuilder mode. Here you can change anything from the systems to the look and layout. Adding a new habitat module can give you more room for crew. Adding cowling can change your ship's overall silhouette. An improved grav drive allows for longer distance space jumps. You can even fully customize your paint job to get the exact look you want. 
The parts you choose to build with don't just affect your ship's stats. They'll also affect what you can do inside your ship. You can have modules for crafting or for storing and displaying your weapons. Starfield's in-game ship manufacturers bring their own look and feel to every piece of your ship. From living quarters to cargo holds, mess halls, and control rooms. Our modified Frontier is a practical ship, but with a little creativity, your ship can look like almost anything you want. It's a bit odd, but one of my favorite ways of customizing ships is um, I make them look like animals. The HMS platypus, as I called it, where it had a, like a giant tail to it. And we've done spiders, we've done mechs. So it's really whatever your imagination is. And while you can build your home among the stars the way you want to, you're probably not the only person who will call your ship home. Ready to lift off when you are, Captain. Engines ready. The Frontier is fueled and ready, Captain. Some of the members of Constellation can join you on your journey. These companions can serve on your crew, and they'll always be there when you travel. We'll be traveling together until we either find an artifact or this lead runs dry. Each companion comes with their own valuable skills for your ships and outposts, as well as unique quest lines. Eventually, some friendships might blossom into romance. I don't know that I've ever really loved anyone except you. And if you're looking for a little extra help on your ship, you can always hire additional crew at spaceports. Got any room on your ship for someone like me? You'll also meet potential crew members out in the world. Still think there might be a spot for me on your ship? I gotta get off this rock. Assign crew to your ship or outposts and their unique skills will affect how they run. And just like companions, most crew members can lend a hand in the field. Take Bosco, for instance. He's designed around the, the core basics of a NASA machine. Please avoid getting shot. You might die. I still wanted to give it almost a humanoid personality, so I elongated the limbs. This tends to make him feel more human-like and give him a little personality. It is a shame. Exploration requires so much bloodshed. Using the ship building tools and crew selection features in Starfield, you'll be able to build and captain the ship of your dreams. And now, let's take to the sky. We're putting you in the cockpit of your very own spaceship and telling you that you can do pretty much anything. And that is really cool for us as developers. Spaceflight should be exciting and dangerous, and you should feel like you're in complete control every step of the way. We've extended that sense of control to ship combat. It's not about just hitting your triggers to fire your weapons. It's a complex dance between your piloting skills and our power allocation system. Boosting power to your engines will make your ship faster. Powering up the grav drives will shorten the amount of time it takes before you can make a jump. And moving your power to your weapons and shields means you're ready for a fight. You should always be on your toes because you're not alone out there. Unlocking the targeting control system skill will allow you to zero in on specific subsystems of the ship you target.
after destroying an enemy ship, you can loot the remains from your cockpit. You can always turn any ship that engages you into scrap. But you can also take a more personal approach by docking with the enemy vessel and boarding their ship. Once you've taken control of an enemy ship, it's yours. Add it to your fleet and retrieve it at any spaceport. But space is way more than fighting for your life. Just like when you're planet side, there are plenty of sights to see and stops to make on the way to your next adventure. Like these massive star yards. Walk the halls, talk to the crew, maybe get talked into buying a whole new ship. A civilian in my star yard. Let's see about getting you a proper ship, one worthy of you. Maybe you'll dock with a gigantic battleship like the UC Vigilance. Or rub elbows with the galaxy's wealthy elite on a cruise ship fit for the stars. There are plenty of personal encounters to be had as well. You can hail any ship you come across to trade, swap info, or maybe even commit an act of piracy. Let's do this. When I'm playing, I generally go crazy. Um, I definitely go like the more piracy routes. Um, I want to take over ships. I'm going to board ships. I'm like, this is now mine. I steal all the sandwiches and put them you know, in my cargo hold that I have specifically for sandwiches. I don't want to play the hero, um, but I want to go out and just start taking things from people as quickly as possible. Some strangers might be looking for a little human connection in the darkness of space. Hello, stranger. I just finished cooking up some food. If you want to come on over, just pop on by. Some of the best moments are the ones you discover on your own. The thing I love most about Starfield is that it is a Bethesda game through and through. It's really about going to strange new places, meeting interesting people, and getting sidetracked on zany adventures then realizing two hours later that you're involved in a completely new story. You're human. We thought we were the only ones to leave Earth. That DNA is so present here. It's in our random encounters, it's in our handcrafted quests, and it feels so cool to play it and just make your own path in this universe. There are over a thousand planets out there just waiting for you to visit. We want you to feel like explorers breaking ground on new planets, exploring every inch of a mostly untouched galaxy. We want you to feel hopeful. We want you to feel this sense of awe and wonder, and sometimes a little fear. We're giving you a massive playground and a ton of toys and just setting you free. Hey everybody, we've shown you so much stuff, but we thought we'd just take a little break and show you something a, a little bit different. You know, we put so much detail into our game worlds and we love the opportunity to bring that into the real world with our collector's editions. And for this game, uh, we've done a watch. It is the Constellation Explorer's watch. Um, this is the watch that you actually get in the game that acts as part of your HUD, where it's the compass and then environmental information. It connects to your phone to give you notifications and other information. And we've also designed this really cool case that it comes with, uh, Isvan. Yeah, we really took as much care and designed this case as we did to watch. Our attention to detail and the game totally translates to this. Inspired by the cases that the astronauts used during the Apollo era to bring back samples from the moon. It's got an intricate locking mechanism, authentic, heavy, comes with a constellation patch, NATO strap, and the overall functionality and believability of this as something that would exist in the world, in the Starfield universe. Oh, and hey, take this. You'll find it very useful out there, and it even tells the time. We actually have something else. Now that we're part of Xbox, we get to work with the amazing people on the Xbox hardware team, and together we have created this custom limited edition Starfield controller. It's awesome. It is now, you know, our favorite controller. 
We love this because it's inspired by the actual controls of your spaceship. And not only that, we've created the first ever custom headset with Xbox. And this is a perfect pairing with that controller. Every one of our games, we always put so much care into all those little details that breathe life into our worlds. But Starfield isn't just a Bethesda Game Studios world, it's a Bethesda Game Studios galaxy. So why go this big with Starfield? Because we want to give you freedom on a galactic level. The freedom to experience both the exciting planets and the quiet ones. Scanning a planet before you land is a great way to get a sneak peek at the available resources you can use for crafting, building, and customizing. I think what's it's cool about this whole system that we, we generate the planet itself as a procedural content, but the handcrafted content itself comes as the player explore. Our system builds a planet as the player approaches it. We stitch together a block of terrain after that, we have the system that adds interested locations for the player to explore, creatures to encounter, or and plants to pick up. It allows us to add that touch of environmental storytelling that Bethesda is known for. Aggressive creatures have been disrupting our experiments. Their habitat isn't far from here. If you could take care of them for us, we would be in your debt. So even if your friends were to visit the same planet that you had, you would have a different story to tell. It's completely up to you how you want to interact with each planet, whether you want to explore and see what you can find, harvest resources and be on your way, or simply take in the views. With the help of your scanner, you'll chart the uncharted and discover exotic wildlife. If you have the skills, you can even figure out that certain creatures and plants, you can build an outpost and produce resources from those plants and animals. You can get experience and rewards for fully surveying planets and fully surveying a whole system. When we were concepting these creatures, we really wanted to think of them as natural to the environment. We didn't want alien monsters. We wanted native wildlife, something you've never seen before. When it comes to our exteriors, when the sun moves, all that light is calculated in real time through the atmosphere. Our biggest goal for lighting with Starfield was to make the game feel more filmic, to use lighting and color to really make it feel more cinematic.
After some exploring, you can find a spot to set up a base camp. Outposts can be built almost anywhere on any planet. And the habitat modules come in all shapes and sizes, filling all different purposes. You can even live in them. Assign crew and companions to work at your outposts for added bonuses and set up extractors to harvest resources while you're away. Something cool we have this time is we have a new fly cam where you can toggle between on-foot building or you can now use a top-down isometric camera which helps plan out larger parts of the outpost and placing those larger halves. So that way you can really plan your structures and what the overall feel of your outpost is. And then when you're on your feet, you can really decorate and fine tune things much easier. Add crafting and research stations in your outpost to utilize any resources you find or already have. Mod your weapons to adapt them to your playstyle. Different weapon sights and scopes, larger magazines, a selection of grips and barrels, different ammunition like explosive rounds. All you stealth players out there will surely need a suppressor. You can also choose to go hands-on with melee weapons. I think it's always a delicate balance between like what's realistic, what's sim, and what's Hollywood. And I think we sort of err on the side of like what's fun for the player. With Starfield, we've completely overhauled our combat. It's more dynamic, the animations are more fluid. It just feels great. We probably have more mods and more weapons in this game than <laughs> I want to say any other game we've done before. There's a lot of variety. Upgraded gear is just one of the many factors to pay attention to when engaging in combat. You may need to switch things up based on your environment. Gravity is different for each planet, and boost packs are excellent for getting around. And for giving you an edge in combat. Sometimes you'll even feel like you're flying. Zero gravity environments pose a different challenge. Firing a ballistic weapon in zero G will actually push you backwards. Energy weapons, on the other hand, offer a more stable shooting experience. We also have mag weapons. These are high powered electromagnetic induction ballistic arrays each barrel has its own targeting laser and can dish out some serious damage. Whether you want to get up close and personal with your own two fists, or you like more compact weapons like pistols and submachine guns, or maybe you prefer something bigger. Starfield's got you covered.